Hey teacher friend, Brittany here from Math with Minis, and today I'm sharing the five best ways that you can teach equivalent fractions to your students. Let's get right into it. If you don't do anything else, then I highly recommend that you have students model and use manipulatives when it comes to fractions. It makes it so much easier and more real for them. Sometimes you don't have time to go through a whole bunch of boxes, so one thing I like to do when I'm teaching in front of the class in person or when I'm doing something online like when I'm tutoring is with digital manipulatives. If you're not already using toytheater.com, I highly recommend that you do. I'll be sure to link it in the video description on YouTube below, but it's completely free. And when you go to toytheater.com, you just go to teacher tools or you can go directly to the link I put up here in the URL box. And yeah, there's just a ton here. So let's look at some of those tools. Just like real life fraction bars, it's the same thing here, right? You can show that you have one whole and that equal to one whole is two halves and that equal to two halves or one whole is four fourths and so on. And then usually when I'm doing this, this is also a really good way to help students further understand what the denominator and what the numerator is. Usually I explain it that the bottom, the denominator is telling you how many parts of that you need to get to one whole. So obviously we would need four fourths to equal one whole. And that the numerator, the number on top, tells them that that's how many pieces we're specifically talking about. So if I'm talking about one fourth, I'm only talking about this one. If I'm talking about four fourths, then I'm talking about what's equal to one whole split into four pieces. And usually I'll use something like fraction circles to really drive that home. So let's look at that for a second. This is also really good, like if you're like using something like pizza or pie, and I'll talk about ways to do that in a second. But fraction circles work just as well, also very similar to some manipulatives you have in the classroom. I will usually show what one whole looks like and I'll talk about that. So if you had a whole pizza or a whole pie, but you usually don't do that, right? So you'd split it up into pieces and how many, um, how many slices, if you put it into 12 pieces, how many are you talking about? That would be one fourth. So I'd say, oh, okay, three twelfths is one fourth of the pizza. And I might even put one fourth next to that I might put two eighths next to that so they can see what it means by equivalent. And just explaining that equivalent fractions mean fractions with different denominators, numbers on the bottom, and numbers with fractions with different numerators, numbers on top, but that are equal in value. So even if we were splitting the pizza or pie up into 12 pieces or into four pieces or into eight pieces, they could make sure they get the same amount of pizza. And that's a really good way to just drive home what equivalent fractions actually are. I'm a huge fan of making fractions work in real life. So if you can cut actual dough up into pieces while you're cooking, maybe if you're homeschooling or teaching your own kids, or even if you can bring that stuff into the classroom, that makes it so much more real. So obviously cutting pizza up into actual slices and having a pizza party helps with that. I actually have an equivalent fractions activity called Pizza Party in my TPT store. I'll be sure to link that in the description down below if you just wanna take that and use it. Uh, but yeah, really fun. And then talking about measurements, it's a great way to hit more than one standard. You can talk about the fractions on a cup, like one fourth a cup, one whole cup, and all of that while baking. So baking is a great way to teach fractions, but also even just having a pizza and splitting it up. You can also get some Play-Doh and do the same thing, like take a batch of Play-Doh and split it up into four or eight pieces. Really, really easy to do that. And it really drives the point home of what fractions are when you have a start with one whole batch of dough or even Play-Doh on their desk really great way to do that. Of course, nothing beats a good worksheet. You can either do a traditional printable worksheet, I have some of those in my store as well, or you can use a digital one like the one here. So I like to make self-checking worksheets in Google Sheets because it's just easier on you so you have less to grade. And the students can also see right away whether or not they got the answer correct, which really helps them to be motivated to continue. So this, for example, they would take the numerator, one times two is two, okay. Click off of that, they got the answer correct, great. Let's look at the denominator, one times two is two. Click off, got it correct. So they can see that one, one whole, is equal to two halves, and that two halves is equal to one whole. I also have, by the way, this resource in my store, so I will link that down in the description below. And I also have a video mini lesson for students that really goes over everything that they need to know about equivalent fractions, including all of the vocabulary, and I even include a multiplication chart in there for them. So if they don't know all their math facts yet, they can use that. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Modeling problems is always the best practice, but especially helpful when it comes to fractions, just to make it a little more 
concrete and real for students. So I really like this other app from Teachable Math. You can consider this a digital manipulative, but modeling is usually a little bit different because the students are actually drawing, coloring, and you know making things that match. So on this top part, you would just figure out how many parts of the whole. That would be the denominator, right? So let's say we want to work in 12. So I'm gonna put in 12 there, tab. And so see now I have 12 twelves that make up one whole. Okay, so it's really important for students to understand that the denominator shows how many parts are needed to make a whole of that. Okay, and then the shaded part, that would be your numerator, the number on top. So let's say I put five there, tab off, and now I have five of the twelfths highlighted. And you could also choose your own color, which is kind of fun. So you could even click on this link and add it to an assignment in Google Classroom if you want for them to practice modeling with their fractions. Okay, I really blazed through those because I know that your time is super valuable and that you don't have time to waste, but your preps are tinier than ever. So I hope that was helpful to give you some ideas to think about how you can start teaching equivalent fractions. Honestly, it's so hard to say that those are the five best ways because there are a million ways that you can teach that would make your instruction more effective and more engaging. So all the resources I mentioned in the video, I've linked them down in the description below, as well as to this epic blog post I have that really dives deep into all of the ways that you could teach fractions, especially specifically, specifically, excuse me, and especially equivalent fractions in an effective and engaging way. If you would like to have more like this, if you'd like to have more pocket PD, so to speak, I go deeper each month with my math mavens. That's my secret group, uh, my little membership of other elementary teachers, specifically upper elementary, who want to make their instruction more effective and more engaging and more fun, not just for their students, but for them too check out more about the math mavens in the description of this video below if you're just looking for free resources right now that's totally fine too i have freebies mentioned down below you can also follow my tpt store in case there are more resources in the future you can also come join our free facebook group teachers doing differentiated math although that might that name might change by the time you join but it's still the same group it's still me in there or you can connect with me privately on instagram over at math with minis talk to you soon